He is one of the best heavyweights in the world, Paris Francis Sirogan. And that infectious smile certainly gets wiped away on fight night, but this is a guy who absolutely enjoys competition as much as any heavyweight on this roster. Figures to have a striking advantage in this matchup and in most matchups in the heavyweight division. But most of these guys, if they have it in their repertoire, are gonna try to take him down. So what has he done? Gon's gone back to the drawing board. He has spent so much time working on his wrestling and takedown defense that he believes his sprawl is gonna show up large here tonight. UFC goal. Folks, here we go, undisputed UFC heavyweight championship fight, and all eyes are on the incumbent as he makes the walk here tonight, and he's enjoying every moment of it. Huge title defense beckons for him tonight. John, he loves where he stands in the sport. He loves the admiration that comes with being the baddest man on the planet. He knows he's the biggest, he's the strongest, he's the baddest, and he loves it. And he prepares as if he never wants to let that go. This man lives for being the best. This man lives to be in the spotlight. And time and time again, we see him defend this belt as if his life depended on it. Well, right, you lose this belt, it's essentially like walking back into your new life. He has no intention of suffering that fate here tonight. Our tale of the tape for this heavyweight championship fight. All right, to get us started now, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Surreal Bungamon And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending USC heavyweight champion of the world, Clyde. Referee Herb Dean will handle the action in the octagon. All right, early round action here, and hard to think of any fighter other than maybe Conor McGregor, who has ascended to stardom quicker in the UFC than Cyril Ghosn. Within a few years of training, he had a UFC belt around his waist, and he believes tonight he will have a decided striking advantage in this particular match. Well, a few heavyweights move as well as the former interim champ, Steel Gunn, and you see the footwork right away as this fight gets started. Yeah, the footwork leads to the jab. The guy does a great job of moving into you, and then he pops you. And then the moment you start to rush, he drops the big right hand on you. Cyril Gunn is a hard, hard puzzle to solve, especially as you go up in weight classes. Heavyweights don't move like Cyril Gunn, and you can see that as we watch him right now. Edge of your seat action as expected so far. So one minute into the fight, and I'm not sure these fighters realize that we got three or five rounds tonight. No feeling out process at all. From the moment this fight started, these two gentlemen were ready to knock each other head off. Deep now. Oh. 
Circling towards the left now. Just over three minutes now to go in round one. Beautiful straight punch there by Gaunt. And both fighters exchange in the pocket. Oh, how clean is that jab by Seattle Gaunt? Always working off of that jab. Nice jab there by Gong. But that punch, no good. So wait, you hit him first. He loaded up there on that high kick. Just out of range with that right hook. Gong's now cut above the eye from that strike. That bears watching as this fight continues. Oh, big knee to the body. How'd he get that one home? Two minutes now to go in round one. Oh! Huge kick to the head. Trying to land the elbow there to no avail. Superman punch now. And just inches away from landing one of those big right hands. Takedown defense is there. Wind it up on the right there to know that. What a nasty kick. That was thrown with ill intent. This could be trouble. Nice. Oh, look at him snap off the jab. That's pretty to watch. Beautiful employment of the jab here. Big right hook coming. It's blocked. They're so evenly matched. They're going tit for tat. Everything plain and perfect. Keep that Throws the teep now and it lands. Thirty seconds now to go in round one. Oh, big knee there! All right, twenty seconds to go in the round. Leg kick lands. All right, so now we start to see some redness underneath the elbow. You got to think he's going to continue to attack the body with all of his strikes. Well, his opponent has not done anything to deter him. He should keep doing this. Keep going to the well until his opponent finds an answer, because right now, oh, he seems lost to Wait, stop. Second round, straight ahead. All right, heading back to the corner now, and we will keep a close eye on things. Gon's bleeding from the forehead a little bit, so we'll keep an eye on that as the fight continues. Hopefully, the cut man can do his work and get it under control so it doesn't bleed down into the fighter's eyes. All right, back to the stools between rounds, and I guess nothing a little Botox can't fix, but let us show you the replay and ultimately the strike that caused that significant damage to his forehead. I mean, his forehead, you you don't see it very often, but even when BJ Penn kicked Diego Sanchez, the damage and the blood that flies Run, off fight. the head whenever you Run. get a head kick to the head, sure. it's, it's very difficult to deal with or get a cut on the forehead. He's got to change his approach now to really protect himself. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be compromising the vision as yet, but he'll need to protect himself so it doesn't get worse here in the next round. All right, so as this next round gets underway, hopefully the good action we saw in the last round will continue. Both fighters certainly had their ups and downs. Both got the offense going. But now we'll see if one fighter or the other can really take control of what has been a very close fight thus far. See if he has any response here. His opponent continues to land. A lot of swelling upstairs. Well, you got to move your head. You've got to be preemptive. You cannot wait until your opponent starts to throw something in your direction. You've got to avoid right now if you want to avoid having this become an issue. Back and forth we go. 
Great job by Cyril Gaon to use his feet to get inside and land the jab. A lot of people are going to be trying to take this guy down, but he moves so well. People talk about Cyril Gaon as if he moves like a welterweight. No, he moves more like a bantamweight. We have always talked about guys moving well at 135. Cyril Gaon moves like one of those guys at heavyweight. That's why he presents so many problems. And not only does he have that beautiful jab, he possesses a ton of power that can put you up. Brutal cut on his nose there. He is bleeding. Big knee there. Good jab there by the champion. You know what's crazy? It was like in MMA back in the day, guys didn't jab him. It was all power shots. Now you see guys well more educated with that jab in their front hand. Oh, another beautiful body shot there. You see the damage starting to accumulate. Maybe some defense would be wise at this point in the fight. I think so, though. You can't just get beat up to the body. It doesn't show itself right away. It takes time whenever you're beating somebody up from the body and working your way up to the head. But right now, we are starting to see the damage, and you see it not only in the body, but in the reactions of the opponent. Oh, man, it ain't Dikembe Mutombo, but he is blocking all these shots coming man, this way. get that out of here. He sees it coming. You're going to have to mix it up. Shake that finger. Shake that finger. Well, this fight's been pretty crazy thus far. Both guys doling out a lot of damage, and neither seems too bothered by it, but clearly both parties are hurt. Both guys are hurt. Both guys are fighting beautifully. Both are showing a lot of heart right now in this fight. They're both doing amazing jobs. Let's see who gets the job done at the end of this day. Well, he's really picked up the pace here in round two. Much more aggressive now here and starting to find himself in the pocket. Oh, he can't even stand. Under two minutes to go in our second round. He's looking for that left hand. Not there. Well, it didn't take him long to get a good read on his opponent. Another good series of kicks there. He thought the kicks would be the key tonight, and they sure have been. Well, we may have the best cut men and women in the business, but I'm not sure they're going to be able to do much with that cut. It continues to widen with every passing stroke. And you're fighting a great fighter. It's hard to deal with the damage of the cut while dealing with the level of the fighter in front of you. Right now, you've got to do something different to try and change the way that this fight is playing out. Blood is flowing now. I know a lot of you like that, but he has got to figure some things out defensively. Or this fight's gonna happen. He's got to move his head, John. But the problem is now he's got the blood to deal with. He's got a sharp striker in front of him. He has got a lot of things to deal with if he wants to win this fight. But right now, the focus needs to be on the head movement, so you're not getting hit in that cut. Man, that is loud. Another strike lands for the kickboxer. He really found that flow state pretty early in this fight, and he hasn't looked back. He found it really early. And when this guy gets into his groove, he is hell on wheels. And right now, he is showing why he is such a high-level, high-regarded kickboxer. He is outclassing this guy. 20 seconds left to go in round two. And now they are throwing both sides with conviction. Trying to hammer that deep leg. Oh, he keeps attacking that left eye. Now it's starting to close. Round two next. All right, so the round is over, and you see the cut man not wasting any time as the fighter makes his way back to the stool. The cut man will try to shut that cut on the bridge of his nose and prevent it from becoming a factor here moving forward. Well, if you like blood, maybe this is the fight for you because blood has really become a factor, and it's a cut that appears to be right above his eye. That's one of the worst spots for you to get a cut because then the blood starts to come down, and it goes into the eye. It's difficult already to see, but when you got one of the best mixed martial artists in the world targeting it, it becomes impossible. They call that the trickle-down effect. Right. That's what that is? That's right. It's right. It. It's All right, here we go with this third round. All right, so an opportunity goes by the boards. He had him stunned, nearly finished, and now his opponent has recovered. 
His opponent. Oh! oh, he is stunned, trying to recover here. Oh, huge kick to the leg. Oh, no! Another beautiful strike to the body, really starting to connect at will when it comes to work in the body, and especially effective doing it later in this fight. Didn't see a lot of that from him in the earlier rounds. Gon's taking aim at that cut right now. A strong decision by him to land strikes on an area that he has already done significant damage on. Oh, oh, he's hurt, he's hurt. That leg kick hurt. Fight. All right, so the cut really starting to open up wider now, and you got to credit this striker for, for continuing to attack that area. Just knowing the target, knowing what he's supposed to do, and doing it as effectively as he is right now. This guy's tremendous. So we have crossed the midpoint in this one. Oh, looking to land the leg kick, but unable to find the target. Well, when you're dealing with a cut like that, it may not be long before it starts to impact the breathing. Not a good spot to be in here. That lands a good series of kicks there, DC. It really didn't take him long to get a good beat on his opponent. He figured the timing, and now he's been driving kick after kick into his opponent. Touched him with the strike there. Those are big strikes. Pretty good execution for him there on the sidekick, DC. Just really feeling himself. One of those traditional martial arts techniques that are making their way to the UFC's octagon. Heavy leather landed on both sides in that exchange. So I'm gonna hit you and then you hit me. Back and forth we go. This is one of the best fights I've called all year. Yeah, one of the best fights. And it, it the, the blood, the injuries only add to the entry. It only adds to Who's gonna continue down the path and get the hand raised? Both of these guys are so tough, they really have laid it on the line. Another nice kick there. Solid series of kicks. They're all landing now. Vision is compromised, there's no doubt. Nice. Nicely done. fight has been pretty wild. A yes. lot of high-octane output on both sides, and candidly, neither fighter looking too good here. <laughs> it's the output. I mean, both of these guys have got their foot on the gas from the start of the fight. 
They've worked really, really hard to get to where they are right now. They're both going to have to rely on the toughness to drag them through the very difficult moments. Well, that was a damaging five minutes. We'll see how he can recover over this 60 seconds. We'll show you some replays now from that previous round. He was on the receiving end of some big blows, and he wasn't moving his head well. His head was on the center line. He was a stationary target, and his opponent opened up a nasty cut on him. He has got to move his head to limit the damage that he's taking. Ready to fight? Ready. Fourth round now, fight scheduled for five five-minute rounds. All right, here we go. The tension is palpable. Fourth round is underway. You've got a thing or two to say about these championship rounds. The fourth round is easily the hardest round to fight. You're so used to fighting up to three. You've got to get back off of that stool. And this is a real test of your real desire to win a fight. Control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Back to his feet. Oh, he lands another strike to the body here. Really starting to connect on a lot of strikes to the midsection here in the latter stages of this fight. Just over three minutes to go. Nice job on defense to block that punch, champ. Oh! Man, look at the size of that bruising on his body. Oh! Inside the octagon, Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 12 seconds of round number four. Declaring the winner by knockout and new undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Surreal Bogomol. There is a new baddest man on the planet. There's the new UFC heavyweight champion. You don't get them all right, DC, but you thought this was going to be the result and we got a new champ? I mean, he has so much power and such an ability to shut the lights off that you almost saw it coming. Congratulations to the new baddest man on the planet.